This is Twit. So you got to, I, I know um, when, I, when we were watching the press conference and they bring out the hollow lens, which look like uh, wraparound sunglasses all the way around your head. Um, at first I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, this is so they get a lot of attention. This is like announcing the, the surface table. This is good. This is because USA Today will lead with this. But this isn't a serious product. But then as I'm watching and then I'm talking to people like Paul and Mary Joe and Harry who actually use it, what do you think? Well, a couple of disclaimers, one of which is we didn't get to try the thing they showed on stage, the wraparound. Oh. We, we tried um, the development version, which essentially is sort of a harness that goes on it your head. A, it has a backpack. And then you, you have yeah. a, a big box yeah. that you wore, wore around your neck. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the coolness looked like it was in the industrial design of the final version. Also, I wear glasses, mm. I have progressive lenses, and I have a really wide head. So when I wore the harness, they were like, jam my glasses like this, and it, it looked blurry to me. But then I asked the, the folks in my little group of journalists who uh, don't wear glasses, and they, they, they said it looked razor sharp. Paul and Mary Jo were blown away. They yeah. said it looks better than in the video. And I was pretty close to blown away, even with the issues I had. It, it really is pretty amazing, it's especially the demo they had that was based on Minecraft, where there are little I want little that. buildings sitting around oh, the conference so cool. room where they did the demo, and, and you can uh, use explosives to blow up uh, <laughs> the coffee table in the, in the My, conference Mine, room. Minecraft alone sells it to me. Yeah. You now oh, understand totally. why Microsoft bought Minecraft. So this is not uh, like Oculus Rift. No, it's a, it's hybrid because uh, you can still see. It's the room around what they you. call augmented reality instead of virtual reality. It's, it's not like Google Glass and it's not like Rift, even though some of the technologies are similar. Yeah, some people thought, oh, this is just a better Google Glass. Google Glass is not this. It's a screen no. above your eyebrow that you look at. This you're looking through the lenses. And you're seeing a virtual world superimposed on it. And you're probably not out and about interacting with other human beings when you're using this. No, in fact, I imagine, I'm guessing that battery life is not going to be an issue because you'll be connected to a laptop or a computer much of the time, I would guess. Maybe, although, although I mean, one of the big deals about it is there's an entire Windows 10 computer in this in wrap, wraparound thing, wow. so you don't need to be connected. Wow. Uh, this is a, That was a good example. They show this really briefly in the video. But Mary Jo said she really liked this idea. Repairs... So you've got the visor on and you're saying, I need to fix my plumbing. You can have an expert. You can have superimposed on the thing you're fixing directions. Um, One of the demos involved installing a light switch, which I did. And there yeah, was, she did it. And there, was, did there was a it. Skype call where you had somebody yeah. stepping you through it. And he was able to, to write on, on an overlay on top of the light switch to show you what was what. Very cool. They also <laughs> mentioned that NASA scientists <laughs> JPL so are walking on Mars to help direct the Curiosity rover. They're doing this right now. We saw that demo too. Uh, so this would be virtual reality in the sense that you're not seeing any of the real world. Uh, some of it was kind of hybrid because yeah. you, could, you could see your, augmented reality. your desktop PC. Well, and, it is, but when, you're, Mars. but when you're on Mars, you're not seeing, you're not seeing the world, your, your vision of the world is blocked by Mars. And the right. demo we saw, it was, it was sort of 80% blocked oh, by okay. Mars and 20% okay. visible. And, and part of it involved still using a desktop PC. One of the things I like about this, the thing that makes me nervous when I put on Oculus Rift is maybe, and maybe I'm abnormally paranoid, but somebody could just come up behind me and hit, and hit me in the head. Because you can't see anything. You are really vulnerable, right? When or you're wearing you, virtual totally. reality headsets. Um, but this, you're seeing the world. And this is just superimposing a user interface or a model or Minecraft on the world or just a big screen TV. Um, I feel like this could be the future of UI. Um, and this is the same thing that uh, that company magically that Google mysteriously has uh, dumped five hundred million dollars right. into, and Sundar Pichai is on the board. If you look at their patents, it's almost exactly like what we saw from Microsoft. Right. Um, this is going to be very similar. A lot of people are betting this augmented. The virtual reality thing, Oculus, is quite different than that. That's you know more for gaming and entertainment. This is a computing platform. This is a real thing. Uh, that can potentially replace desktops and mo uh, mobile devices and so forth. That's uh, that's pretty exciting that we got to really see it uh, for the first time, and we saw it from Microsoft of all companies. And they managed to keep it secret until for, for until six years. years. As many as yeah, they, a thousand people knew about it. They had <clears throat> different project code names given to different groups because if there were a leak, then they would know which group leaked it. But it <laughs> didn't leak. I got the sense talking to some of the people who were doing the demos for us that. Some of them only knew about the aspect of what they had worked on. Because if, right. you, if you asked them any question that was at all off script, they seemed kind of clueless. And I think that might have been genuine rather than them continuing to keep secrets. There's a few problems I can see. For one thing, 
uh, user interface that requires your hands held out in front of you is limited in the amount of time you can. That that's tiring. Um, but um, I I feel like this this is the first new user interface I've seen in years that really has some promise. You know, we've For seen a lot of things. I had the leap motion thing where you wait, eh, uh, the Google Glass. Eh, uh, none of that stuff really uh, sold me. This really, uh, and people who've tried it, agreed this is more than just a gimmick. And you can also use it with, with a keyboard and mouse if that is I preferable. think you would in many cases. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there are certain things, like they had a demo of, of sculpting 3D objects where using your hands made total sense. Is this a gimmick, Christina? I don't think it is. I think that, I mean, execution is obviously going to become the really important thing and having that killer app right out of the gate. Um, I, I was reading something, I, I think John Gruber linked to it earlier this week, that, a, that someone who had worked on uh, Connect and Microsoft mentioned that, you know, um, it, it's kind of scary when people say, I can't wait for developers to get their hands on this because the answer really should be that you already have um, products that exist even without developers that, that can be sold on the basis of just the, the, the first party apps and first party experiences that come out of the gate with something. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, but I don't think this is a gimmick. I think that, you know, so many companies have been investing in kind of this, this virtual reality, augmented reality kind of future UI stuff. And Microsoft has come out of the gate and shown something that frankly, just the demos we've seen and talking to people like Harry and, and, and Lance Ulanoff who went for, for Mashable, who have played with it, um, have come away really impressed mm. and people who went in skeptical were, were really impressed. And and that's, um, you know, how long this will take and, and what the potential here is, I don't know, but I think the potential is very real. I don't think this is just a gimmick uh, as long as out of the gate, there can be some sort of use case that makes itself apparent. And it's not one of those, now let's just wait for people to build stuff for it. Um, I, I do also think that unlike Google Glass, where the idea was we're going to force everybody to use this all the time and, and be out in public with it and it'll become an extension of yourself. Microsoft is very much saying, you know, this is something you use indoors. This is something you use for certain experiences. It's not something you use all the time. And then maybe down the line, the goal might be, well, eventually this becomes something that, that you want to have at all times. But it's not as if they're selling this as part of a, you know, your lifestyle has to be revolving around these right. ugly glasses. In fact, at no point really in any of the thing. demos or videos do they show anybody outside the house, right? No, exactly. And and I think that putting it in those contexts and putting it in those, this is, this is why you're using this. This is why um, this will make things better really gives rationale for why you're putting this thing on your face to begin with um, right. versus just I'm going to walk around with this on and 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 everybody's going to love me or, or think that I'm a total douchebag. You know, it, I think it makes it a lot easier to potentially adopt something if you can see it as a segmented part of your life. But imagine that in your motorcycle helmet, somebody saying in the, <laughs> Feld is saying in the chat room. Uh, imagine it, I mean, it, unlike the Oculus Rift, you could drive with these on and get valuable information. Um, in your surroundings. Um, but I think you, you're quoting uh, the John Gruber uh, piece. That's Peter Molyneux, who is a former Microsoft exec executive, not there anymore. But he does raise an important point. It's great to look at this stuff, but you've got to get somebody to develop software that works like this. And that is nothing we've seen before. This is all from scratch. And it's kind of incumbent on Microsoft to do that because one of the issues with Windows 8 was they, they put out an all-new computing experience and then failed to build anything themselves that was all that compelling. I mean, we, we still don't have uh, the full blown version of of Windows of Microsoft Office for uh, right for this. They actually did yep. show that at this event. The yeah. touch touch first Finally. years after Windows eight showed. <laughs> right. So I think after the iPad version, you know, right. you're after yeah. the iPad version. Right. So I think on day one when this thing is available, there have to be some Microsoft applications for it, which are really compelling. I bet you, and I think it would be sufficient knowing uh, quite a few twelve year olds that if they did Minecraft, they'd be done. <laughs> they would sell a lot of these. All right, how many of you connect. guys, Minecraft, if you could do this, yeah. you put on the thing, oh, yeah, and the little. Minecraft, instead of going like this with your Absolutely. your hammer hand, you could uh, draw, and you could, you can look, you could, if you look at this picture uh, uh, on the <laughs> HoloLens uh, microsite, if you go up to that fireplace and look through, there's another room that's so cool. That you're looking into. You can look if, through a table. If you bend down and look through the windows oh, of these houses, so cool. there's things in there. Um, that means, I mean, now Microsoft buying Minecraft makes a lot of sense, frankly. Yeah, I mean, I think if you could do Minecraft, if you could do AutoCAD, and if you could maybe do something with, with you know, I think Skype, those 
that might be enough, at least for an early product. Too bad to, to, more twelve-year-olds don't have a thousand dollars to pay for a hollow lens. <laughs> but if they, but if they did, I think. Mommy well, and Daddy do, you, do though. Dad, mommy yeah, and Daddy. Exactly. All you have to do is yeah. tell Daddy uh, there's bikini-rich content. Tell, <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell mommy. We'll have to think of what you tell mommy to get her excited. Uh, but, bikini rich content. Come on, let's let's, let's be equal opportunity. Okay, you know, mommy bikini. likes that too. Mo mommy likes men in bikini. Ryan too. Ryan on. Gosling is in there somewhere. <laughs> Look around. Um, but I, I feel like you're right. Minecraft is not enough in the sense that the the the, the constituency for Minecraft probably this has got to cost a thousand bucks. Or Google Glass is fifteen hundred oh, yeah. bucks, right? At least a thousand. But I think about myself. Well, if it, I would pay a thousand bucks for this. I think glass was expensive as it was, partially to discourage everybody from super early adopters right. from buying it. Uh, I would spend a thousand bucks for this. I would. One thing that Microsoft really didn't talk about, one of the many things they didn't talk about, was really how the technology works and in terms of what's. You can see there are some cameras in there. Uh, which, this is from the Connect division, right? So there's some Connect stuff in there. The guy behind this is was also the guy behind Connect. Yeah, Alex. Uh, yeah, Alex Kipman. Kipman. What, okay, so uh, what do you, what do you think, Steve? Are you are you, are you going to get in line? Oh, I'm definitely going to try yeah. it out at least. I mean, uh, my colleague Matt Rosoff was off, also at the event, and I mean, he wrote this in his uh, hands-on experience, and he was telling me he's like, I haven't seen anything like this transformative since I first touched an iPhone. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. To say. Yeah. And so that just got me super excited because I mean, I've tried Oculus, I got that whoa factor, but. I don't see it as a computing platform. I see it more entertainment and social and um, gaming, of course. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. is everything. This is gaming. This is, uh, you know, productivity. Uh, and you just take the long view. I mean, this is really close. And I think another interesting thing is, this is the first time we're seeing Microsoft kind of show us something in the experimental phase. Um, you know, kind of do it. That's very Googly. You know, Google showed us Glass. They show us self-driving cars and tell us all these crazy projects they're working on that probably will never come out. And to see Microsoft do that's really interesting. And you know, like other companies like Apple, they never show their hand. And you know, you got to bet that they have something similar in their R and D labs right now. But we'll, if we ever do see it, we're not going to see it until it's a hundred percent finished. There's a price, there are apps and software, and it's you know perfectly polished. Um, so it's kind of cool to see Microsoft get a little messy with this thing.